Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Camilla Carrara, Project Coordinator Class. I am really pleased to welcome you all today to the seventh session of the 2021 edition of Class Smart Voices program. Stella McCartney, considerable fashion created with responsible innovation at its core since 2001. Now, I'm extremely pleased to welcome our today's speakers. Giuseppe Bettoni, CEO and founder of Class, Veronica Potoco, Fabric and Trims designer of Stella McCartney. Enjoy your vision. Thank you, Camilla. And thank you, Veronica, to be with us at our chat today. Really pleased to be back from this period of where I hope everybody of us had, uh, could have the time to relax a little bit, to recharge the battery, to get a little bit more energy. But really, really pleased to be back with Veronica today because you know, I'm sure that everybody of you knows very well what Stella McCartney is doing. You know, it's, uh, it's such a, an ambassador for everybody, you know, such a, a reference point. But I thought it was important to look at what she has done you know, in order to get uh, to this objective that is also the objective of class, you know, to do something responsible for sure, but at the same time, something beautiful that you, you, you want people to desire, right, Veronica? You know, that's where we would like uh, to go with. And, uh, I, and I think the whole life, you know, of uh, Stella McCarthy is the beginning, and that's how we have started with the Evite that we decided together. And uh, let me introduce, anyway, uh, you know, Veronica, uh, Veronica Potocco, Fabrics and Trims Manager and Stella McCarthy since 2011. So a life, <laughs> basically, you know, with someone that is always going and setting new standard, you know, I think Stella hates standard, you know, she wants to go always beyond and someone like you that has to research in the market and, you know, to try to get a smart solution. I think it's something exciting at the, the same time challenging, you know, but that's also the passion behind what you are doing. But let's maybe start sharing, uh, you know, a little bit some images and start to ask you the first, for me, key question. You know, let's talk a little bit about um, what does it mean sustainability at Stella, which is the philosophy, you know, let's start from really the beginning. Veronica, well, up to you. Hi, everybody. I'm Veronica Potoco. Um, I'm representing Stella McCartney. We are a luxury fashion brand and we are a different kind of luxury fashion brand. We don't use any leather, fur or skins in our product. And we like to cause a bit of disruption in the fashion industry. We like to uh, bring innovation to this world. And um, when we first started, and when Stella first started, much before I joined, uh, she, was, um, she was challenging the world. They thought she was crazy because of her business model and the way that she brought these values into her business. They thought that it would never work, um, but she's unique. She's an amazing boss and she's someone that really inspires you. She fires you up to fight these kind of uh, challenges that every day we have. And um, I, I'm very happy to be here and I've always wanted to work here. So I feel like it's a privilege. Um, so today I wanted to talk about some of the examples of the things that we have been doing and how we managed to introduce sustainability into our products, into the supply chains. Because from the day one, Stella thought, and also in the strategy that was um, set up also when I started, because it wasn't just me that did it, it was everybody. We have a, an amazing team. We have an amazing sustainability team and we have Stella that directs us. Um, the, the whole approach was on to looking at how we can do the biggest impact. And the biggest impact Stella discovered after seeing how the statistics were looking um, was on raw materials. So we, um, we decided that we would attack. And I call, I call this attack because for me, it's like a battle every day. And it's a bit of a war fight. And, and I want to, to make a change. So it's every day is a challenge. And we decided to attack the raw materials, not to approach like um, 
some people think it, it might be approached like i don't know other industries that they think about emissions or other things but we thought the raw materials are what we are delivering in the products so this is what we need to look into so we realized that the fashion industry is this very big pollutant and a, a major water consumer because most of the finishings and dyes and everything are done with water. The cleaning of the fibers is done with water. So um, just one little th fact that it's a bit depressive, but it's very important to note is that 20,000 liters of water you need for to produce um, this amount of one kilogram of cotton, which is shocking because one kilogram of cotton is probably half of one of your pair of jeans. So um, this is very worrying. And um, so our girls in the sustainability department, they looked at the supply chain. And as you can see a bit of, this is not the latest one because it keeps evolving every day, really. Every collection we change because we are constantly improving. But uh, this is how things flow. There is uh, different materials coming from everywhere and everything. We have different hubs in Italy um, that produce, that collect everything and uh, produce it. And um, after that, um, it gets delivered everywhere. And uh, yeah, so this is a bit how our, our flow of raw materials is working right now. Um, and um, here is my boss, Stella. She's this amazing person that uh, has this vision for us. And she, like I said, she fires us up every day. She's got this uh, heritage that comes from her parents, especially her mom, Linda, that was so, so passionate about creating a sustainable future. And um, I really admire her. I always did. And she's our muse, really. And um, she's the one that every day she's here and she fires us to, to resolve this. So as I said, the emphasis is on raw materials and the supply chains. So um, let's look at some of the materials that we are- Can I, uh, Veronica, can I, yes. can I interrupt you? Not interrupt, yes. but just to, you know, uh, build on these because yes. we are coming to the big, <laughs> you know, because, I, I like the fact that you are talking about, you know, being a fighter because we need to be warriors sometime, but, you know, and we will see now, you know, we wanted to hear some case history. And I think that this, you know, fact sheet is really clarifying how many case history, you know, that has changed really the supply chain. But I would like also to say that uh, you have a really a special, you mean also Veronica, <laughs> you know, inside, but all the team is like that. You know, you are doing this fight but always uh, working together with your supplier, you know? And it's yeah. not a question of who, but every time you establish special, you know, relationship, I think, you know, in order to work together and you have been the first one, you know? Now everybody's talking about, oh, you need to do the partnership with uh, the supply chain in order to make things. So we have case history, but we have also a special approach to the market as well. Definitely, do you see? This is something that we took very seriously from the beginning. We have some amazing people that have helped us throughout the years and that they are our key partners and people that have come along and they started becoming key partners. But everybody that we know and some people are listening now, um, they have helped my life be much easier um, and they, they've been inspiring to me because they came to me with lots of amazing solutions that I never thought of. And um, every day we look at every fabric or trim decision and we see how to improve our choices and these partners, um, they help us. And the, what I find most important is that we never, we didn't drop partners or suppliers um, throughout the years. We worked with them. We gave them challenges. We asked them how we could improve. It wasn't that we saw that, oh, this guy is not doing anything sustainable. Let's leave it and let's go with the new best thing. We, we talked, we discovered, we worked together. And uh, we also have, we don't just have um, this amazing office we have in London, but we also have an amazing team in Italy in a city called Novara. I don't know if many people know it. Do you see, but it's very close to Milan. And the team there has been instrumental 
to doing this possible. And um, yeah, it wasn't just, it was, it's the purchase team there that has done from some, from uh, sourcing to with me to um, sampling and production is everybody that was there um, helping. And it wasn't just helping find the stuff and convert it, but also test it and make sure that everything is right and that it arrives to the customer in a way that the quality is the right one. Thank you, Veronica. I, I think it was a very important point because um, as you said, it's, it was not always just look for the most sustainable, but let's talk to the quality people, to the people that has, uh, you know, the kind of uh, approach to innovation and become responsible innovation. And these uh, fact sheets is showing the milestone about your, you know, uh, the kind of journey of Stella yeah. in these years. And, and maybe we can start uh, if you, well, this is the second slide with the milestone, Definitely. just to give you, you know, the perception of how many things, you know, we sell has happened, you know, in this uh, time. Yes, this is a very good um, introduction to everything we've done. So I think the first of the few fibers that I want to, to highlight in this talk, because there are so many things that I could be talking about, but I think that these are the ones that will have the most impact and they are the easiest to resolve. Um, and uh, I think that I want to leave from this talk um, feeling that I've actually helped someone make the right decision tomorrow when they go back to, into the office or into the, the, the design room or into their uh, factory, um, because I can see that there is people from everywhere and I, I really salute you, especially, as I said, my suppliers. Um, the first uh, yarn that I want to, or the material that I want to talk about is the uh, viscose. So viscose was first called rayon. It was uh, this miracle fiber from the 1930s. It was um, created to replace silk and it was, very, very popular in the 1940s. And after that, it just took over the whole world. But there is lots of misconceptions about this. Many people think that this is just um, um, fiber like polyester that is made out of, of um, is, it's a chemical fiber, but in, in reality, it doesn't start from, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, a source like polyester, it's actually made from trees and it trees make forests. And many people are not aware that actually this goes back to forests that might be or not might be sustainable. People don't ask questions about silks, about viscose because of this, unfortunately. And it's something that I want to raise an awareness about. And uh, many things have been unchecked because of this. And um, it's something that I really, uh, I, I care a lot about. And um, so basically viscose is made out of tree pulp. Um, they, there is a chemical process into it. And this pulp is like, a, um, it we could call it like a porridge. It's made into a fiber or a filament. And this fiber and filament is being spun and made into a yarn and then you can weave it or knit it into a fabric. So it's, it seems very far away to think of a tree becoming a garment, but this is what is happening. And it's an amazing fiber because actually has a lot of very good properties um, about, um, uh, how do you call it, the wearability. It drapes really well. It, um, the, the humidity, how it keeps you fresh in the summer and slightly warm in the winter. It has lots of amazing things uh, to it in comparison to synthetic fibers. But uh, we need to, I, we thought that this was one of the things that we should approach at the beginning of uh, this frontal attack that we did on our supply chain. And that's when our partnerships became in, super important. And we know that all these forests that are being affected by the viscose can come from Indonesia, Canada, the Amazon, and the ones that are unchecked, I mean. And uh, Stella has been very concerned about that. And on 2017, I remember spring 2017 being the big deadline of finding a solution for everything. 
I'll never forget because I literally, I dream about it. I have nightmares sometimes about <laughs> baseball. So, <laughs> yes. So it's, it's ingrained in my memory. And I knew that that was my deadline for making sure I had a solution about that. And um, it is very serious because these forests in, this, in the world, they are the ones that produce everything that we need to sustain us. Um, only 20% of the world's ancient forests remain intact, enough, and inta enough to maintain a biological diversity. These forests, they house all these different animals and creatures and micro creatures that keep us alive. And um, they're very important for us. So it's horrible to think that places in Indonesia or the Amazon, they are being um, chopped up to make fabric for garments. So as you, we can see in this slide is 150 million trees are locked and turned into fabric every year. Most of it is illegal logging that turn, happens under the eyes of people and it's not reported. So Stella had a very big stand on this and she said, I'm not going to be taking part in this. And I am going to work, find a partner that actually has traceability. And traceability is the most important word in the Visco story. We need to find something, some way of doing this that is traceable. So we look for two streets, um, find a, diff, two different kinds of viscoses that were traceable. And we started sourcing good pulp from Sweden. And we work to get them certified FSC. This was our amazing sustainability team that made sure that this happened. And they visited everywhere. They made sure that everything was completely checked. This pulp is sent to Germany where then they turned it into this amazing high quality viscose filament. And, um, and then this German filament is sent to Italy where we distribute it among our suppliers and we weave it into different fabrics. And it's not just we just weave it on and on and on. Every season is a challenge because we are a fashion company. We need to be relevant. So we need to innovate every season in this aspect and we need to make it new and make it desirable. So it has been a very big challenge to because obviously not every viscose is the same and we learned this the hard way with seeing a million trials um, and seeing how it reacted in different ways for different drapes and um, we turned it into different fabrics and I am eternally thankful for everybody that tested all of these qualities and worked with me to work on the finishings, the dyeing and the weaving to, to make it happen. And um, you took out the best of viscose, but you know, changing the way to produce it. Yes, and, and also it. we worked really close with the designers, with Stella as a head designer, but also with the girls that work with me and uh, with girls and boys, obviously. Um, uh, into seeing what was the best that we could do with what we had, with what we could use, that was something that we could um, feel good about, that would be traceable, sustainable. So we took these yarns and we made the best of it. So I am very grateful that these designers had a lot of patience with me and we worked together into finding the right colors, the right weaves like this shirt that I'm wearing today is part of the story um, and um, yeah we so no compromises and, design driven yes. innovative responsible yes. and yes. something amazing to wear because exactly. that's what station is about yes and it's something that we as designers want to wear every day actually because if you go around the office today everybody's wearing everything we, we produce and they're wearing it with pride and they're comfortable and they, they know that it works in every way. And we know and that you can innovate in a responsible way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's the pro. And, and, and it, it was a massive team effort. The designers, the people in Novara that supported us with all the trials, with the dyeing, the people in our factories, uh, our partners. And uh, we had lots of challenges. Lots and lots of fun challenges, but it, we're working with it. Every day is a challenge. Every time we grab yeah. a new inspiration. 
And so maybe let's go into the next challenge. Yes. So this is cotton. Um, organic cotton has been a big part of our history since Stella started. She worked with organic cotton. Back in the day, there weren't many um, organic cotton yarn counts. So this is the different thicknesses of, and um, twisting and, and the amount of yarns in a twist of the cotton. So there were very few alternatives to use. So slowly, slowly, we did like a library of everything that we could use and everything we wanted to use. And we converted everything that we were using into organic cotton. So we, um, we were very lucky that the industry also worked parallel and there was more availability. And, uh, and this is a challenge that we have every day because as you, you, as you can see every season, we want to do something new and the designers come back with some crazy idea that they want to, <laughs> to do. Yeah, you know, like I do see. You, Absolutely, that's why fashion is uh, amazing. Yeah. Exactly. So they would come with something, I don't know, all my grandmother's coat. I want to do it in like, I want to do something like this. And then we take the challenge on and we try to, to make it work. Um, and, um, and yes, and, and, and it depends on the availability of the yarn, but I, yeah, yeah, it's, we, our, our goal obviously is that the cotton becomes something that is um, regenerative agriculture because we know that uh, these, the agriculture of cotton and the land use of cotton farming contributes to 23% of global emissions. So we need to be very careful where we get it from and we are investing in this and we are working with our partners um, to make sure that we have an even better solution than organic cotton for the near future. And we are experimenting. We have some lovely samples upstairs. And um, this is our, our next step. And I know everybody's talking about it, but we are making it a reality. And yeah. we are wearing it as well. We are trialing and we are trying the colors. And we, we think this is the, the regenerative agriculture is a way of, of cultivating the land that probably anybody that has had um, agriculture, like my grandparents come from the north of Italy and um, on my mom's side, and they had in, in, without knowing a regenerative agriculture in their land, in their little exactly. hectares in, in, <laughs> in Piemonte. And then they did that when they moved to Argentina. Uh, but uh, it's a way of farming that um, it, in a very healthy way, it captures and stores this carbon dioxide that is so harmful into the soil. And um, also it's, it's like an extra step on organic cotton. And, um, and yes, it's, it's a step forward. And I think, and we know that that is the future and we are working yeah. towards that. We know it's working and we know the first example at commercial level are coming. We've seen, you know, we have Patagonia. We have been looking at this first. Exactly. And we know that you are, you know, supporting, reinforcing uh, this way because it's a way to diminish for, you know, for sure the impact that the cotton, generally speaking, has on the environment, but at the same time uh, to go back to a very healthy soil. <laughs> that is really good. Anyway, climate change, uh, you know, we have these. Uh... Exactly, because they also the agriculture of cotton has been taken away all these nutrients from the soil. It has taken away the biodiversity in the area that is cultivated and in the surrounding areas. Because well, pesticides yeah. and all of these problems, all of these things have de depleted the soil of everything that is good in it. The soil yeah, has we have, got uh, its own biodiversity. We have seen examples of people start to change, even in Europe, doing something different, as you know. Yes. And I think this is the way to go to the next level. You know, just talking exactly. about cotton is not enough, as you were exactly. mentioning. So definitely, definitely. So um, the last in, uh, innovation that I want to talk about is um, our Milo mushroom leather innovation. This is an ongoing challenge, and uh, we've been working with both threads for a few years, and um, we are very, very proud of this project because it's 
something is the future of, of leather, of fake leather, or whatever you want to call it, is this look that we all desire to wear in the street and in the catwalk. And uh, it's a way of making it happen without harming any animals and um, without using any um, carbo, um, yeah, carbohydrate, um, no, sorry, um, some, anything that comes um, from um, synthetic fibers like polyester <laughs> or polyurethane. Yeah. So um, this Milo innovation is, comes from mycelium that it's the underground wood structure of mushrooms. So it's not the mushroom itself, but it's the underground bit. And um, it grows in these tiny threads that it has a very big network under the forest. Um, if you ever pulled a mushroom, you can see that, that how this is happening. And this is the future um, because it has so much to give this material. And the people at both threads are tapping into this and they know that it's the future and they are investing a lot and we've been working with them, look, doing a lot of trials and um, we've launched a, a Falabella bag and we've launched also some garments that we did as a, it's the first Milo garments ever in 2021 and um, we are going to keep on working till we put this innovation in the market. I think, and Veronica, then, we are yeah. facing another, uh, let's say, step into the yes. uh, innovation and responsible innovation, because uh, yeah. I think uh, you are you know, creating something that was not existing before, that has different shapes, different hands with different application without going to, you know, as you were saying, polyurethane and all these, uh, you know, material that allows the resistance of, you know, and the look of these fake things. So I think it's amazing because, uh, you know, in textile, uh, we have not perceived, uh, we have not seen, uh, you know, the, the, the grow of different things. You know, we, we have a certain fiber, we have natural, we have, uh, uh, you know, high tech, uh, and we have uh, now all the recycle, but this is really a new level of innovation with, that will allow something different. If I look at this garment, I see something that I couldn't compare to anything. You know, it's very difficult for me to see, you know, it's one or the other. So it's really amazing, you know, to have this creativity, yeah. this openness, but someone want to converge in, in, in a corner, but I think it's something to open up because uh, it can really uh, be disruptive. <laughs> yes, also in it the is. process, you know, uh, it, it change. Is. It's so. challenging us as designers as well. So, and, um, and it's fascinating us. We, every day we see a new it's trial. Really and fascinating. and um, e each trial that we see and each closer it gets to, to actual um, production line, like full on production line, it's fascinating. And we are very, very close. And, and um, we, we are really, we're really excited about this because Stella is setting up this new, this new challenge. This, this new thing to the world that you don't have to kill anything, you don't have to pollute anything to have something that has the look that you are looking for. It's a new look, it's a new touch, it's a new performance. That's, I think, is the good thing. Then, you know, trying to get everything in a corner or to define it A or B or C, but I think, uh, you know, the creativity together with uh, uh, the power of innovation, knowledge, and you know this partnership at different level will take us very far. So, really amazing, and we know it's another kind of journey as well. Exactly, exactly. I forgot that we were going to also mention Econil. This is um, something very important in our outerwear and uh, also in other garments that we do. Um, Econil is um, a nylon, and it's very important to us because it's very linked to the oceans. As you can see, we see fishing nets in this image and um, the, these oceans that we, we adore. I love swimming into, I'm, I'm, I'm a diver, so I, I'm very passionate about this. These, um, the, the oceans cover 72% of the earth. They supply 70% of the oxygen we breathe. They have 97% of the planet's water and lock away 30% of the emissions. 
of these carbon emissions. So we know that the oceans are under threat. We've been listening to this on and on and on. Every year, 8 million metric tons of plastic waste go into our oceans. Um, it's not just a threat to marine wildlife, but to human health, because everything that comes from the oceans ends up in our cells. We know it. Um, the oceans are just one. They're huge. They're all connected. So whatever happens on one bit, it ends up on the other because the currents are this amazing um, magic thing that happens on the earth that it links us all these continents. And um, we are working um, very, very hard to switching all our current nylon to Econil um, since 2017. We found that Econil was the best solution in the market and we've been supporting it. Um, it's a very good alternative. It's perfect. I think that as an alternative, yarn to yarn, count to count, it doesn't have anything to complain about. It's very, very well. And it takes this waste from uh, different things, from like carpets, waste fabric, fishing nets from, collected from the ocean, and it's recycled and regenerated into a new nylon yarn that is exactly the same quality as virgin nylon. And this I have to emphasize to everybody that's listening because many moments in my career, I found that the eco alternative wasn't as good. And in the case of Econil is one-to-one, -one, it's perfect. It's, and this goes into the Falabella go bags that is one of our best sellers. And it goes in the outerwear pieces that uh, Juicy can show us now. The Stella wear is also made out of it, and uh, which is this amazing new line that Stella launched last year. And um, all of this is made with Econil yarn. And um, we are very proud of uh, supporting this initiative. And um, yes, it's, uh, it's something that um, we we want to keep on supporting. And then we have recycled polyester. It's another uh, yarn that comes from from an, um, from is a, another plastic basically. And um, we work with it on a lot of categories. Uh, our Falabella bags are lined with it. We use it for outerwear like we're seeing in this picture as well. And um, it takes around 70 billion barrels of oil to produce the polyester and nylon used in fabrics each year. So making sure that all these plastic bottles that are made of polyester, they're being used into something else is very important. And um, this recycled polyester requires less than half the energy to produce than virgin polyester would. So, um, it's our responsibility uh, as shoppers, I think, to make sure that whenever we buy anything made of polyester, it's made of recycled polyester, especially with silly things that are so easy to change, like warding, like the filling in, in our duvets, all yeah. uh, the filling in our pillows. Um, I think our, as consumers, we can challenge our local supermarket, our supplier of um, of duvets, anything that we buy, because it's everywhere polyester at the moment. And people are not conscious of it sometimes, but polyester is terribly harmful if it doesn't come from the right source. I, I love what you said, because, uh, you know, there is this tendency to, to talk about bad or good, but I think is how and who is transforming yeah. this fiber. And, uh, and that's why we keep saying during all this smart voice, please check who is the company that you transform it and how they behave, which is their strategy, also ethical level. And then let's check how they transform it because not all the recycled polyester are the same. You were sharing with us the data of the savings, for example, about the energy, the savings, you know, about the, 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 the kind of... Uh, a quantity of uh, you know materials and resources to to make it happen so don't just trust uh, a generic name of recycled <laughs> you know let's put a privilege but also understand what is behind i think i i totally agree with that you see i worked with um companies like our polyester new life is the gold standard at the moment yeah. i think yeah. 
this is my personal opinion yeah. um and because it comes and i've seen it myself because i have family i i was born in argentina but i have family in the north of italy and i've seen the waste from the trucks going from these uh, from my family's uh, bins going into the recycling place and then going into the factory that does new life and they have been transformed into yarn and this yarn is high quality yarn and it's a proper way of doing it it doesn't it's a proper closed loop there is no pollution coming out of it um it's it's like i said the goal is fully traceable <laughs> yes it is and, it, and, it, and it, there is no travel practically yeah well i've seen people i i've seen i heard stories of of polyester recycled polyester being produced with bottles that we are were made specially out of out of polyester to to be able to be recycled so that they could put the label on it so it's important to challenge these things and um yes it's 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 important to ask whenever you go and you purchase something um if in if it is at your supermarket or if you go to the fabric fair ask questions because everybody will be happy to answer them and um, and if not you can keep on digging but um i think only by digging i found out all these things and obviously digging not just from me but from the sustainability department and our amazing people in novara um in in italy um we made sure and we visited and we saw it with our own eyes and we made sure we had the certificates and that everything kept on happening um, up to the standard that we wanted that's very very important yes and uh, i think this last image of the presentation is very important to us because stella um, has been using this circle as an image of of her brand and it's symbolizing the circularity and how this is our ultimate goal is that things are circular and uh, we want to get there as soon as possible that they're perfectly circular and that uh, we can be proud of this and uh, we are not perfect that's for sure we're not perfect we're trying every day and everybody um, here is uh, working towards that um, but yes, we, we want to build a supply chain that we are proud of. Um, our partners, we are proud of as well. Um, we are investing in innovation as well. We look, we are happy to hear any solutions that are around um, and we want to make them happen. We want to see new fibers. We want to experiment with them. We want to, I invest a lot of my day um, looking at trials and giving comments. I'm a bit mean sometimes, I have to say. Juicy, you know about that. I'm not very uh, politically correct every day, but I want to, to push this. And um, whenever something doesn't work, I say it. Because in the end, there is no point in producing something that somebody will not want to buy it and keep it forever. Like I kept all of my grandmother's clothes. So that's so important, you know, so great. And uh, we have still, you know, three minutes left, four minutes left for the last question. And I would like to, to ask a question that maybe you can, you know, you already start to share it, but how we can do a good research when we go uh, dig and looking for, you know, uh, what we need in order to make a, uh, a collection, what, you know, a material, you know, how, you know, to make it good you know, which is the way you have already said the question and so on, but which are your key recommendations, you know, if you have two or three to share today, because we know very well which are the challenges. We, we have, you have said also the opportunity, but maybe let's help to understand how, you know, to do a good research. Yeah. So I have to say that the fabric fairs in the world, all of them, they have um, done a very, very good job of um, marking up who of all these suppliers are sustainable or they are using any innovation that is sustainable. And that's a very good starting point. And we learned also during COVID that 
we couldn't attend these fairs and these fairs have made available all this information, this wealth of information to everybody uh, online. So that's a very good starting point. And there is fairs of different levels of the market. Um, so we are in the luxury world, but you can go all the way down uh, to the lower high street and um, there, is, uh, there is sourcing places for everything and um, they've done it very easily. And I consult them every day um, because I sometimes don't remember, I have very bad memory and I, I don't remember something and I look them up. Um, also, even people in our, I live in London and I have amazing shops here um, that, have, that sell fabrics and they're very keen to tell me where the materials come from. So asking questions is very important. Um, and then if you know it means suppliers and you're work, working with suppliers, it's important to ask where the materials come from, where the yarns are bought from. And if you are already being told where the yarns come from, you can ask the yarn supplier or you ask your supplier of fabrics, where do they think that the raw material is coming from? Um, I think that suppliers are very proud of what they do. They are all in some way, they're artisans in their own field. Even when we are talking about very techno things like polyester and nylon, they are in a way artisans and they make this magic. And um, these people know everything about what they do and they can tell you the whole story. And uh, I think that that's a very good starting point. And even if you are a small designer, like I was when I was very young, because I, well, while I was studying, I was doing my own brand and I was working for a fashion brand back in the, in, when I was young. So um, I've always talked to everybody. I, I never felt um, shame or, or I was never worried about upsetting anybody about asking the right questions. So start with that. And then if you engage with these people and you start having a conversation, check if there is any certification involved and then um, try to Google the certification, check if some good entity approves the certification. Um, that's, I think that's the, the best standards. And if you look up our website, it that's for us is our gold standard. The people that we're trying to work with at the moment for yarns, and then um, they are the they, they are for our, for us our gold standards, but we we're, we're trying to set a pattern. But uh, yes, the um, the fabric fairs are are also the the other next gold standard, I would say. Thank you, Veronica. It, it, you know, I would go on, uh, you know, not just listening, but having a lot of questions to ask, but there are a huge lot of questions that is waiting for you. Okay. And I anticipate immediately <laughs> that uh, as we want to take care about each one of them, in case we cannot deliver all of them now, we will come back, leave us also an email that we will be back to you because I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure that some of them will be you know, moved, you know, to other conversation because we do not want also to limit the answer from Veronica to, to all of them. So Camilla, maybe if you can Yes, start. I can start from the one of Gary. Oh, so he's asking, uh, what is your approach to garment care and what is the logic behind it? Thank you. She said it. Okay, so garment care, that was something that I never thought when I first started, but um, our sustainability department was working parallel to us on that, and they worked with, um, um, with in, in, this, in this approach and trying to find the most ecological garment care. So if you look at um, our labels in our garments, they tell you the um, most sustainable, they, they, they have a link to find the most sustainable garment care. Uh, and different fibers are cared in different ways. So obviously cotton, um, uh, viscose, they all are either dry cleanable or, um, or you can wash by hand or different things. But there, there was a concern about that because um, 
dry cleaning everything is not a solution. But we also have to be making sure that our garments don't get deformed or changed once people buy them and they stick them in the washing machine, for example, if they're not careful. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is viscous recyclable? Does it have a large carbon footprint? Well, it's recyclable depending on the amount of um, chemicals you put on it during the finishing and the, and the dyeing. So it depends where you do all the finishings and the dyeing. So it's important to find a responsible supply chain, um, a supplier of viscous that it's actually working with a good dye house and a good finisher. So yes, it's, it's something that degrades. It's not like polyester that takes millions of years. Um, and it depends on how long it takes, depending on what you put onto it after it has been woven and finished. Okay, thank you. And then uh, what is the end of life for products made with Milo? Can it be recycled back into itself or can it be compostable, for instance? What are the parameters that you are building around this concept? Well, our, um, our, our ideal and um, as, as a design team is that it would be compostable. Um, and this is a work in progress thing. And um, so we're working on it. We don't know how it will end, but that's the idea. And all the finishings that we're putting on top of it, well, that the bolt threads are putting on top of it are towards that end, but uh, it's, it's not a finished thing, really. Um, sí. Can you talk? Yes. Can you talk about uh, how you are tracing the viscos? Are you using a, a third-party blockchain? A what? Sorry. Blockchain. What do you mean by blockchain? Ah. Well, <laughs> they are asking it. Okay. Maybe yeah. Ariele can ask. Ariele, maybe you can do your question. Sure. Okay. I was just asking, hi, I was just asking and curious about the, how you're tracing the viscose and are you using a third party or is it within Stella McCartney and um, are they using blockchain to confirm the traceability of it? Okay, uh, as far as I know, and um, this is through my sustainability department and how I work with a few of my suppliers, um, some suppliers are more peculiar than others, like, for example, Brunello, they are very, very thorough and they use um, this, the, he, they are aligning and, the fab, and fabrics for garment supplier and they're amazing and we feature them in the, in the campaign of uh, last year's summer, the, like the shirt that I'm wearing, um, it's that season. Um, and we feature the factory because we were we are so proud of them. You can, up to a point, you can scan each roll of fabric and go back to where the forest, which bit of the forest was chopped up in Sweden. And if this is a sustainable forest that is keeping keeps on being replenished constantly, so it's a sustainable forest. So. That's a very, very well-managed uh, process. Um, and um, yeah, so they can go back to the, to the tree to where, where it was. Then uh, Sandra is asking, is recycled polyester cheaper to produce than making a new polyester? <sighs> That's hard to say um, because on, for the sake of getting a recycled thing that harms less the environment, we are happy to pay a premium, really. I think, I don't know in all the levels of the market, but um, I would say that because there is no extraction, it should be, but I, I don't want to be quoted on that. But uh, I think if to get an amazing polyester, a fabric in the end that is recycled. Um, I think that if you compare it, um, it's approximately the same price in my level of the market. And now one question for Juicy. 
what are class predictions in sustainable fashion for the years to come? Well, it's a big one, uh, Veronica. <laughs> we can answer together, I think. <laughs> I think we are, you know, looking that, uh, you know, the push to make good things in a good way and, uh, you know, is, do, is becoming more and more important because we have uh, the evidence that the contemporary consumer, and we are talking about contemporary consumer because we see from the research, you know, that uh, from McKinsey and many other has done, you know, the consumer, the contemporary consumer is looking to find new values in fashion and not just in fashion, because if you think that the word that come out very strongly at consumer level as one of the, I think the number one value over 10 that they, you know, described is justice, you know, is uh, to take care uh, about people, is uh, to treat people fairly. And I think uh, the, the DNA of sustainability <clears throat> is starting in creating uh, no impact on people, no impact on animal, no impact on uh, water. You know, I think Veronica described very well, you know, the ocean is just one. And we need, uh, I think, as an industry uh, to start thinking uh, design. Design is, a, I love this word, uh, to design in a way, you know, before producing something on which are the impacts that we can create through it. So if I think in get, you know, sustainability in the next future, of course, it's not easy because there is nothing easy at the moment for many reasons that you all know very well. But for sure, we know that the new values that people is looking for is represented by, uh, you know, the what I call for me, it's the responsibility yeah. that we have, uh, you know, toward the, uh, people toward the environment, toward animal, toward the oceans. You know, without this, I think no innovation is going to be a good one. And uh, this will not be recognized by, by the market. And we know very well, because we are looking at it, that the new proposal coming from uh, the fashion, you know, it's going also toward the new target. If you look at the fact that at the moment, the numbers for secondhand, you know, and I, I'm, I think I'm, I'm not using the right uh, terminology, let's say vintage, but anyway, something that needs to be reused because it's really good will be in five year times, but you know, there are people that are saying it will be even less, will be stronger than the frustration one. So to me, this is already something, you know, uh, that tells the, the whole story, you know, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. I don't know, Veronica, if you have something to add to this. From I, I think I agree. I think Stella is a muse for us, as I said before. And for her, waste is something horrible. And um, she wants to make sure she can get all the waste that we have and the waste of anything that is around us and turn it into something beautiful. And for me, that's the future. I myself, I practically only shop at Stella McCartney because it's my work and I want to wear it proudly, but I also shop vintage and um, because I want to not let those resources and those amazing things that were created either, it, it doesn't matter if it was in the 1920s or in the 1990s, go to waste because there was all this water and all this raw material used into making them happen. So first has to be tackled, waste has to be taken into very importantly. And then there is other trends that are happening, like we said, and that there will be the things of the future. If we have to use cotton because, um, I don't know, some things wear out much quicker than, than others, uh, make sure that it comes from an organic source or even better from a, a regenerative agriculture. That for me is the future. And if we're using anything that it's polyester or nylon, that it's either recycled or that it comes from a biosource, there is a very big uh, movement. And we are um, testing all of these things onto biosourced uh, uh, materials that come from, from, um, from uh, plants. So it's, um, it would be plastics made out of 
spoils of plants. So I think that there is a lot to look into there in that world. And we should, we should start testing it and experimenting and making sure it works properly and then roll it out massively um, parallel to using what we have that is all these plastic bottles and fishing nets and recycling them. Everything that there is that is waste, making sure that it goes into, into something useful. Thank you. Then also Filomena is asking, hi Veronica, do you have an advice for young fashion designers? What is your biggest learning? Ah, that's, that's a hard one because I don't know. I, I learn every day, actually. I'm fascinated because I never get bored here. Um, and um, I think that is listen to the people around you because it's I, I'm talking today on behalf of Stella as a company, but I'm representing all of these amazing people, like my lovely little team of fabrics and, text, um, and trims in London, that these girls that are the most amazing, but also the people in Novara and all of our suppliers that have put all this energy. So, and I learn every day. So listen to the people around you, ask questions. That's the most important. And then, I know that some of our su suppliers or, or the people that I see when I go to the fabric fairs, they think I'm a bit annoying sometimes, but push. Like in, you're never going to be wrong for asking and for dreaming. I've said some things 10 years ago to some people and then down the line, like two, three, four, five years later, they came back with a solution and they said, look, Veronica, I know you said this so, so many years ago, we found a way to do it. The yarn count that you were looking for is actually available now. So you never know, like, and they didn't even think it was important back then, but they found a solution and they came back to me. So ask and you will get someday. Um, that's in, it's important. And you never, you never know where it will be. It might be a big supplier or it might be the people in, in, in Berwick Street or Shepherd's Bush, one of the people here in London that are suppliers or whatever is your high street of fash fabrics in, in your hometown, if you're a small designer. But ask and try and push and make people excited about it. That's my, my biggest thing. So thanks a lot, uh, Veronica. We have still other questions, but I think we are run out of time. And so Giulio, Sandra, and I think uh, another one, Camilla. Uh, yes. um, there was a free still. Manuela. And Manuela, if Man you can, if you want. And also some private one. <laughs> so so a lot of questions. give us uh, your email or, you know, we I left mine in the chat ah, okay. so, so you fine. can easily so, send uh, over Veronica, we will share with you the question that we cannot answer at the moment. There are a lot of compliments for you anyway, and I really thank you so much because it's really good because you are talking like someone that knows and has been doing this for a long time. It's not just a marketing lesson, but you are really... Uh, like this, and if people is going around fairs, as soon as they start again, she will be <laughs> the first row when they open, you know, to go to talk to people. And thank you to all the people that has been with us today, you know, to, you know, continue our journey around information. We try really to do our best to inform as much as possible, trying to have case history from many point of view, but always try to be conscious because that's, you know, class is not choosing for you, but it's trying to give you the best in order to make your conscious choice. So thank you, Veronica, Camilla, and to all the attendees today and uh, keep in touch for sure. Have a good day. Bye.